a question I get asked quite a lot is how I test things like power banks or lithium cells for their capacity. And the answer is that I use a milliamp power meter. I mean, you could use, you could do it manually, but these things are very useful in the sense that they monitor the current in over time. And this is uh, the one I used to use all the time, the PortaPow, which is very good because it doesn't load the circuit down. It's got its own built-in battery, or you can run it and recharge at the same time off a USB power supply. And uh, one of the nice things about this is it, it can also measure voltage, uh, but it has the adapter here you can plug other connectors in. Very high current uh, connector, I should add. And it lets you test up to 5 amps at just about any voltage, up to about 50 volts, I think, which makes it quite a useful device. But it just makes it a bit bulky that you need to plug it into another USB power supply or if you're going to do a long-term test. The other ones I've been using fairly recently was the Unity. I used the Unity because I thought, you know, their meters are quite good. So I tried this one out. I've been using this for a while. I got this and I've not really given this much a test yet. This one was making a big thing about the fact it has this uh, precision current shunt inside it. You can see this sort of wound sort of coil of wire there. But the one I'm using all the time at the moment is made by Rudeng. And uh, I've got two of these now because Lost Johnny sent me one. I had one already, but this is going to be a useful backup because uh, I had a moment recently. I got this uh, power supply to check out because it had been putting out an erroneous voltage and uh, overheating quite badly. And I thought, oh, I'll just spontaneously plug this in and test what voltage came out of it. I plugged it into a socket. It didn't make a good connection, so I wiggled it and it went bang. <laughs> And it blew a big flame out the end. And uh, fortunately, this meter survived. Uh, the first thing I did was, like, find another power bank and plug this in and see if it booted up, and it did, so that was fine. This one has a colour display in it. I've got it set at a low intensity because you can put a timer on it. It's got a full colour display. You can put a timer on this uh, option. This It's got a fairly complex menu. And you can adjust intensity and the time the display will stay on. So I usually, just for, because I leave this doing long-term uh, capacity tests on big packs, I'll uh, set this intensity down quite low because it just means that, you know, it takes the strain off the display and LEDs. So it just means that it's going to last a lot longer. So when I actually test them, let me bring a notepad in here. I work on the basis that the traditional USB power supply, something like these little modules here, this little power bank, the classic one, uh, or indeed this one that I'm about to charge, uh, these have a very simple circuitry. You've got the USB in, USB in, so that's 5 volts, plus 5 volts, and let's say 0 volt. And they have, to all intents and purposes, it goes through a chip, and the chip acts like a variable resistor. And uh, it's a lot more complex than I'm showing here. I'm just showing a resistor here. And then it goes to the lithium cell that's being charged. And what the circuitry does is it effectively acts like a, a current limiter. So say, for instance, it's going to charge at one amp. Then the current flowing through the whole circuit will be one amp. Uh, so the current flowing into the lithium cell, lithium, uh, will be one amp, but the current flowing from the USB power supply will be one amp. And that's what the unit will show up when you plug it in. Let's do that right now. I'm going to plug it into uh, this pink power supply. I'm going to plug this lead in. And I'm going to plug it into this flat power bank. Now, this one is very odd because it charges at a really low current. If I use the menu option here, you can select backwards and forwards. It's showing it's charging about 500 milliamps, but it settles down quite quickly to about 200 uh, milliamps. Are you going to see that at all there? I do have the display set quite low. Hold on, let's see if I can... Uh, I'm trying to remember how to do this because it's very rare that I go into the menu. It shows a graph over time as well. So let's see if this one... Oh, no, I've just turned the display off. Yeah, this is a terrible idea. I shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. Right, oh, anyway... I think I've set this to Chinese accidentally at power up, but that's okay. I can set it back. Um, it's showing uh, 530 milliamps at the moment, and it also keeps a running tally 
of the capacity uh, at the moment it's showing it's put 7 milliamp hour in. So initially the cell will start at 3 volts and because you get 5 volts over here this will initially drop 2 volts and it'll just dissipate that as heat. The little chips inside get quite warm. If they get too hot they start self-regulating down. At the end of charge it'll be closer to say 4.2 is the end of charge so this will be dropping less than a volt and at that point the, the current tends to tail off and that's quite where it's quite useful having this uh, unit that automatically monitors the current and when it goes below a, a fixed threshold it will stop logging it because it allows the fact that the power bank itself will have an LED and it will be drawing a small amount of current for its own circuitry so it stops logging at that point in time so you can literally put this in charge in a suitable metal tray I always recommend charging stuff like this in metal trays if you're doing it overnight uh, you can go to bed come up and, uh, come back through in the morning and it will show the capacity milliamp powers that it stopped at is very useful that way. The one exception, the one th point you can't do that is with something like this. I've not opened this yet, I will open it in the future. It's a Duracell 2 cell power bank, it seems to have quite big cells in it. I don't think it's just standard 18650s. The stated capacity of this is 6.7 amp hour. I charged it from flat using this and it showed 5.4 amp hour. But in this case, I think that instead of just using a current limiting element here to allow it to charge fast, it will use a switching regulator, which means that it takes the 5 volts in it, say, 2 amps, uh, which gives 10 watts. And then at 3 volts, it will actually convert that 10 watts to the current will would be about 3 amps. So it does a... Uh, it's got a switch mode regulator, which means that it charges more efficiently with less heat and it can put more energy into the sort of lithium cell. And you might say, but what about the losses in the lithium cell? That's not accurate. You're, all you're showing is how much current went in to charge it. Well, the amazing thing about lithium cells is they're just ridiculously efficient. They are just amazingly efficient. If you put one amp for an hour into this cell, you're pretty much going to get most of that one amp for an hour back out again. They're really impressive technology. Um, and, you know, they get a bad press because they do have this amazing energy density. And the problem there is, say for instance, this is an EFES cell rated uh, for a discharge current of 10 to 20 amps. Probably uh, is 10 stroke 20 amps. Guess that's 10 amps continuous, 20 amps peak. But this one's rated over 3 amp power. And if you consider, if that's 3 amp power, that means it can put out an amp for 3 hours or 3 amps for 1 hour. But if you start abusing it um, and you shorted it out and it put all its energy out in one minute, that would potentially be uh, 180 amps for a minute. 180 amps for a minute for a minute. Or if you punctured the cell, and most of these things, when you see the videos of them blowing up, it takes about... Would you say it takes about 10 seconds for it to vent and blow out? So uh, that would be a multiplier of 6 again. So for a total of about 10 seconds, this thing could theoretically, if it was discharging all, all its energy, it could put out about 1,080 amps, which is about 3 kilowatts of power. That's the problem with them. It's not the lithium in them that blows up. It's the fact it's got so much energy in it that when it gets shorted out or something fails inside, it puts all that energy out very quickly, and that results in extreme violence. The amount of lithium in these is tiny. Uh, if you consider the materials in this, it's got just a tiniest little sniff. They call it a lithium ion cell because it is just a smattering of lithium ions. Uh, it's got copper, aluminium, graphite. The materials in it aren't that bad. You know, if this did go into landfill, I don't think it would actually pollute it too much because they are fairly natural occurring minerals and they're not a hugely concentrated quantity. The, it's the word lithium that gets these the bad press. If... I'm testing something like this for capacity. Uh, I use this little thing here, and this is where the, the chili pepper comes in. This is a power bank that was shaped like a chili pepper. It wasn't terribly practical. It was a bit annoying because it had a fairly high quiescent current, so I whipped the circuit board out. This is why it's that odd shape. And I put a connector on it. So when I want to test one of these cells, or say this cell here, I'll put one of these connectors on it and I'll plug it in. 
and that just instantly turns it into effectively a little power bank like this. And that means I can use loads like this little uh, LED flashlight converter, which uh, plugs into a standard USB power bank and it puts out a good amount of light. The keywords for this is at 3 watt or 5 watt, can't remember, I think it's 3 watt uh, USB flashlight adapter or something like that. You'll find them if you search for the, all the magic keywords. But if I'm testing the, a, a cell like this for capacity, I will typically plug something in like this and I'll just leave it in and just sit it there until it runs completely flat and the protective circuitry kicks out and uh, suddenly this light goes off and that's the battery flat. Then I'll recharge it, say for instance with this. Uh, so I'll plug this in here after I would reset the thing before that. And uh, that shows, because the cell was already quite charged, it's showing only about 400 or 500 milliamps screen at the moment. But then I'd basically leave it charging with uh, the cell connected and it would give me an accurate indication of the capacity of this cell when it was fully charged. If you've got cells that uh, like this, the 18650, you could just use a complete power bank with the module inside it and you could slot this in uh, to that power bank. Oh, that's that's not going to fit. Oh, that's one of those super tight ones. I'm not, I didn't try this beforehand. That's one of those scarily tight power banks. But uh, you could pop this into one of these power banks and uh, measure the capacity of it that way. Other things worthy of mention, I've more or less covered everything. That That is how I test the capacity of those. Oh, the this one I will open it up later on. So this one must have a converter in it. It's probably got two inductors. It's got the one that will step the cell capacity, uh, the cell voltage up to 5 volts. And it's got the one that will uh, take the charging current in and convert it back down to the cell voltage. Another thing worth mentioning is that these units, I think this one can handle wider, uh, quite a wide voltage range. These things can also cater for the quick charge uh, function where it boosts the voltage up. To, it'll actually negotiate with the device that can charge with quick charge. I don't know if this can do that or not. It doesn't specifically say it, so probably not. No, it just says 5 volt input. But the power banks that can take the quick charge, when you plug them into a suitable charger, they will negotiate backwards and forwards, and if it's possible, the voltage will be stepped up to a higher level. And because the current in the lead is, say, 2 amps, but the voltage is higher, it means more power can be transferred across that lead. And then when it gets converted down inside again, it means the power bank can be charged at much higher current internally for the same rating of cable. The downside of that is I'm not overly keen on super high-speed lithium charging. I, I prefer lithium cells to be charged nice and slow because it takes the strain off them. It makes them last longer and it uh, reduces the risk of overheating and sort of nasty incidents. Uh, what else is worth mentioning? Another thing that's worth mentioning is Say, for instance, this is a 3 amp power cell and it measures at 3 amp power and then you stick it in a power bank like this, you're not going to get 3 amp power out on the 5 volt side because the voltage of the cell will vary between about 4.2 down to about 3 volts and it has to be boosted up to 5 volts and there's certain losses. The little inductor and the switching chip inside will get hot in the process. So there are losses, so you won't get the 3 amp power capacity as like three amps for an hour at five volts, so to speak, or one amp, more likely in something like this for three hours at five volts. You won't get that, it'll be much less. But that's uh, how I test those things. So hopefully that will answer most of the questions. I think it will. I think I've covered everything. That's rare, I've actually managed to get everything in and not miss stuff. I say that, you never know if I have missed stuff. If I have missed stuff, I'll leave it in the description down below. That's the best thing. And that's it. That's how I do all my tests on lithium batteries. Oh, there is one other thing worth mentioning. If I was in doubt, say for instance this one, if I wanted a real test of the capacity, I might actually take the lithium cells out it, put my little adapter on, and plug it into a really dumb charger module like this, or the little uh, pepper charger module. And when you do that, it means that I control, I monitor the current completely going into the cells without the sort of... Uh, regulating circuitry 
And as a result of that, it will give a very accurate indication of the capacity of the cells. So that's uh, what I'd do in that instance. It's what I might actually do with this once I pop it open. So um, that is it. That's how I test lithium cells for capacity.